Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrei Shevchenko and on behalf of Ukraine Media Center Ukraine Forum team, I want to thank the journalists who tell about our fight for freedom. Today we're having a special event. We will be talking about how Ukrainians use the electronic services, why it's important for the Media Center of Ukraine Ukraine Forum during the last year during the war we've seen that the picture changed dramatically with use of the electronic services by the citizens of ukraine today we will be able to see the, the results of this study in this area and we will probably proceed immediately to this study mstislav banik head of electronic services development at the ministry of digital transformation of ukraine good afternoon everybody it's maybe a very important topic today i i will share my key summary that that i achieved during this last year of war the process of digitalization is going on it was not launched during the war and the bet that we made on the development of the mobile application it brought its fruits now and uh, last week during the world economic forum it was announced that we export dia abroad and estonia which was number one country in terms of electronic governance it, it was Estonia who were the first to take the result to adopt our experience not under the influence of some uh, cut code the, the, of which DIA was developed upon, but now they were they're trying to adapt this DIA application for the Estonian electronic governance and that's yet another confirmation that this area of electronic services is very important for all over the world we will be talking about the people who use internet those indicators change on an annual basis and during the war we were keeping on launching the electronic electronic services that we were planning to launch before the full-scale invasion the social services pension certificates something that we launched together and we are now facing some new challenges to launch the services related to the aftermath of the war. For example, the information about the damaged property, the damaged real estate or destroyed real estate, or services related to informing about the movement of Russian troops, the launch of the chatbot, and the services which are not government services as they are so like dia radio or dia television so people have access to the united news marathon the radio broadcast so those so that those news can be delivered to the people when russians try to destroy our tv channels to deprive people of the possibility to receive faithful ukrainian news and even in the absence of electric power and the breakups with the cell communication the number of the users were was growing so today we will be talking about the results but one of the key insights that i want to share that within 2022 the digital services became number one in many in a sense that they became the one way of delivering the documents and news to, to, to the people because we were living in a paradigm re just recently that offline is number one thing but online is something auxiliary but now we see that offline cannot exist physically now because I know a lot of places that were the centers for municipal services and they were targeted by missile strikes and talking about the areas of active warfare where we cannot even talk about any uh, offline services so dia was the only bridge to those services delivered by the government so i want to thank undp i want to thank the government of switzerland who supported us in making in producing those services during the war for those 
who were affected by the war. And this study that we did, it may show the dynamics where we're moving, what's the direction we're moving. Yes, indeed, the war made Ukraine a, num a leader in terms of digital services in the world. We will see the study and I want to pass the mic to Olena Ursu, who represents the UNDP project group here in Ukraine. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. The UNDP uh, supports such studies, uh, such uh, interviewing of people within the last three years, and it's very important for us to track the the evolutions of people's opinions, to the challenges they're facing, so that within our projects and initiatives we could relevantly react to these difficulties and challenges. And we will definitely hear the final figures from Mr. Anton, who represents the Kiev International Social Institute of Sociology, who is a partner in such interviewing. But I would like to emphasize some areas, some trends that we've we witnessed, something that we will be working within the next couple of years in support of uh, digital transformation. First, we see that there is a steadily growing number of citizens of Ukraine who use the electronic services as of today. According to the results of this most recent study, like three out of five Ukrainians who said that they have an experience of using the digital services in DIA and they and the, they evaluated as possible or most positive or mostly positive, which means they're satisfied with the quality of the services. And it means that the number of services uh, accessible through DIA is steadily growing. Also for UNDP, which implements their ac activities through the prism of this steady development in order not to have an anybody stay aside, it's uh, important to cover the most vulnerable parts of the population. I, I mean, the, the people who end up in some difficult conditions in their lives. So we've seen that according to the results of this study, there is a growing number of internally displaced persons in Ukraine, unfortunately, and a lot of them were using electronic services in DIA, r registering their status. And also th there is a growing number of uh, disabled people and people over 65 years, the pensioners, the single parents and other vulnerable categories of uh, Ukrainian citizens. It's very important for us because as the government of Ukraine emphasizes the digital services should be accessible to anybody and we will pay more attention in our program activity to this matter. But the, the key the key user of the DIA is the young is mostly a young person living in big cities. So our partners, the government of of Sweden, and the ministry, we will take all reasonable efforts to expand the user base in the smaller areas, in villages and smaller towns. We were working last year on launch of 10 new digital services, but also we w wanted to raise awareness among Ukraine's population about such services. And more than 70% of the citizens said they were seeing the information about the launch of such new services, which shows that the level of awareness of the opportunities awareness about the opportunities is growing among the users of DIA and I also want to emphasize that one third of both men and women is still remaining who never used digital services and the majority of them like 70 percent say that they never needed them actually that was the reason they never used them and that the more people will install DIA the more this percentage will decrease. But there is also a large 
fraction of population who mentioned they don't have proper digital skills. And us, as the develop UN Development Program, we have a priority for uh, information campaigns and training courses and other instruments that we will use to increase the level of awareness of the population about the available services and to expand the digital literacy in Ukraine. And before teaser becomes a spoiler, Anton Grushetsky, Kiev International Institute of Sociology. Good afternoon. Thank you. It's my honor to be able to work in this project for three years already. We draw the attention of the media and of the population that there are many sociologic indicators that should be told about. And now the center also is a part of repelling the enemy attack. And the sociologic indicators show that there is a growing optimism on in, in Ukraine. A, a lot of people think that, that Ukraine will be a prospering country in 10 years, a member of European Union. And we have to understand that in peril there should be work in the society, which become the, the stem for creating the new prospering Ukraine, a country where you want to live, where you receive high quality services. And when we see any Positive dynamics, it's very pleasant and it's a stimulus for working on and on. It's not that we're just talking about, but there are some practical changes that Ukrainian citizens feel. And it's a great factor for development of Ukraine after the victory. So first of all, let's proceed to the key information. There was a lot of information gathered. We will tell you about the basic indicators. So, so first of all, is the level of use of internet. Talking about the digital services, it contemplates some minimal competences in terms of using digital services. Back, uh, we see that in 2021 and 2022, 71%, almost 72% became the daily users of internet. So the fraction of those who don't use internet at all is minimal today. And in this slide, we will see the information which is broke down by age. We have this age differentiation that the people of older age use internet less, but we pay attention to the fact that the typical portrait of a internet user was a young person, now the, even people up to 60 years use internet on a daily basis and even over 60 years. And the number of people over 70, like 60%, they don't use internet on daily basis, but the households usually use, uh, the households usually in, in include young people also, so these statistics may be variable. And th there is access to internet in villages and small towns, and it promotes the use of such services everywhere. But we have to understand that there is older population which should be reached out to to increase this number of people using internet on a daily basis. And th there is another indicator: the Ukrainians who were using the digital services at least once, and we see this indicator steadily growing since 2020. Now it is 63%, it's a very powerful indicator. And the people who tried the, the, a service once or even more, and it's a great level of engagement in fact. And we understand if there is such a huge number of people using the digital services and if those services were bad we would feel a very powerful wave of hatred it, it, but we see that we're proceeding to a new norm to a new standard that all the services may be accessible through and available through dia there is also age differentiation sometimes up to 100 percent for youngers and the majority of the people who don't use such services are obviously among the older po population, but some of them really don't have such a need, but some don't have proper skills to use such s services. 
among the older population. But the advantage, I mean, in terms of sociology of people, of the younger people using these digital services uh, increasingly, is that they're economically active population. So the question was which were, which exactly were the digital services that people were using. And the leader is the DIA application. Meanwhile, it's a list of certain services for the people. It's an integral application for government services or integrated application. So back in 2022, this, indica this indicator was 30%, and it, it, which is even lower in 2020. And COVID pandemic and the digital certificates were something that promoted actually the application of, of DIA. So you could see that uh, apart from the certificates, you could use other services, which turned out to be very convenient for the people to, to use. And some people were uh, just used to uh, some non-digital services, which were also available through DIA, and that was probably the only reason they were not using it in India. Obviously, we were asking how convenient is that for the, the people. Obviously, if you use some services and you have no uh, other options, so we were asking how convenient was that for you. So 80% of the users said that it was convenient. However, about 50% were saying that they wanted some improvements, but that was constructive critics, which was useful for everybody. We, we could fix some bugs to digitalize some functions. It's a healthy process. And that, that's the feedback that the ministry reacts to along with the partners. And year to year, this indicator that is, is not is not lowering because people keep observing the quality of application, the bugs are being fixed. So if before it was on only 19% of the people who were not seeing any bugs in the system, later this indicator grew up to 20%. Well, it may be a small change, but it shows that e even during the war, the work is still going on and people feel how useful the application is. And we also were asking, what's the format that people prefer, either visiting the municipal service centers or rather the application, because the people have really positive experience receiving services from municipal administrative service centers. So to, to, talking to those people, we understood that people were trying to do it online and they start getting used to it because they understand that it's convenient. Well, as we mentioned, among the people who never use digital services, 70% state that they never had such a need but we have to understand that some people just don't realize that there are some needs that they have and the such needs may be satisfied online without going a anywhere. And they just don't realize that using this service or online would be more convenient and more quick. And some people just don't really want to do it because it's the issue of some psychological barrier that we have to keep working with. Uh, but people keep hearing it from their friends, from their relatives, so they will understand that it's more comfortable and they, maybe they will proceed to using those services in digital mode so they understand that it's not so complicated because sometimes the elderly they have for example an impression that the digital services is something remote but it's really built in a very user-friendly way and another important indicator is when we talk about the development what should we pay attention to there is a number of criteria for those digital services that we cannot say that 70 or 80 percent is a number one criteria criteria it shows the 
difference of Ukrainian audience that we, I mean, we were, should re respect their comments, but we can segregate two main clusters is the availability of feedback or availability of contact with the digital with the support center something that w when you can talk to a real person through online chat or make a call another component is confidentiality and security of information so confidentiality or the availability of a digital signature so it's the security thing when we hear the news that there were 20 million digital accounts sold somewhere so people treat these digital services with, with caution so it's more in the sphere of psychology rather than objective things but yes we have to support people in this regard we have to convince them that there is maximum security and we are ready to help you we are ready to support you in this regard uh, another very important slide that you can see later in detail the respondents see certain areas for themselves where the digital services would be useful for them for example the registration of new vehicles registration of a newborn child uh, so people are interested to have those services available in digital format but and it's important that actually almost 80 percent were able to say that they found at least one service at least one digital service useful they've seen the if before it was 70 percent who were saying they never had a necessity to use digital services now they've seen the list of those services available and they've seen that they can do a lot of things online and this awareness now people understand that there is a big number of such services used very interesting offers so people start using it and they continue working in this direction and it's cool that there is a sociological support and it's not only the project being implemented but uh, there is a constant work going on uh, thank you, thank you for your attention. If there are any questions on the floor, please let us know. Good afternoon, Jana Koloda, Ukraine Forum. And my question is to Mr. Mstislav. It's known that Ukraine was allocated $650 million for development of DIA. And what are the countries that, you, except for Estonia, that Ukraine cooperates in this area with U USAID? allocated 650 million for promotion for analysis of technical components what is the launch of dia abroad the launch of dia abroad is not microsoft office that you install on any computer it's not the system that on one end uh, for example for, for different users there may be a different list of fields in their uh, application uh, the launch of DA abroad m means the access to government registers so it's not about the deployment of DA in certain countries but rather it's related to analysis f uh, to see whether it may be launched in this or that country generally for their understanding in USA USA is from the very first day with us and why the USAID or UNDP support the development of DIA in Ukraine because it's transparency, it's fighting corruption, it's the availability for different categories of population and the money that was invested by our donors, the governments of the United States and Sweden, it was not only that those investments justified themselves, but it created the instrument that can help other countries and there is interest to spread this experience to other countries. So those funds allocated by USAID are for preparation of export of such solution to democratic countries. And what are other countries that we cooperate with? Or it's only Estonia. Well, it's a little bit too early to talk about the list of the countries because uh, at the government level, it's a lengthy process 
because from the beginning there is interest, there are uh, negotiations, there are technical consultations, and only uh, thereafter it may take a shape of some international agreements, and we can only announce something after those agreements are entered into. Because, for example, in case of Estonia, we have... Uh, we have this agreement for a long time because we use a lot of Estonia's experience in our digital transformation. We had a lot of negotiations last year, we had a lot of sessions in autumn, and only now they announced that they will launch their application in the middle of this year. So there is a number of the countries, and probably this year we will be able to announce not two or three countries. Thank you. and. Another question is, what are the services that ministry is working on and what are the new services that we may see this year? Well, we've started, we launched the beta testing of uh, aid to the single parents. There is, uh, uh, the beta testing is about to end for registration of matrimony. Also, the, there is the launch of the project for replacement of lamps, which is uh, or light bulbs, which is uh, quite important for energy energy technical area. You, you, you know, the replacement of these light bulbs it may decrease the consumption of electric power ten percent in Ukraine. So it's a big national project for light bulbs development. It's in beta testing phase now. So the people who signed up, they, they already know the departments of Ukrposhta, the, the post offices where they can pick up their new light bulbs. Uh, and it's obvious that we keep working on uh, custom clearance. It's a long-term process because the car customs clearance doesn't mean that we re replaced paper form to digital, but is the transformation of the whole sphere, of the whole field, and there is a project. It's one of the pro important projects that we work on, and with the support of UNDP and Sweden, we will keep developing the, the social sphere because it's very important now, important this year, because the, there is a growing number of people who need support who, due to the war, who need some aid. I mean, starting with the internally displaced people and other affected categories of Ukrainian citizens the veterans, the injured, so th there is uh, uh, an increasingly growing number of such people because the people who sacrifice their health, their lives for the victory, they will need such services more and more. It's our basic plan. One, one second, one, one, one second, microphone. Yeah, 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 650,000, not 650 million. Uh, Steve Kleinman, Pacific Rex. Um, I'm wondering if you can talk about the use of DIA for reporting unexploded ordnance, and if you happen to have any statistics as to how many cases of UXO were reported. It's about uh, damage to property, etc. Right? Um, I, my, my understanding is that that if someone comes across a UXO object, a, a mine, some kind of booby trap, ah, that you can take a photo and bot, report it. Chatbot with reports of this. Yes. So it if to speak about the chatbot, when person people can report about uh, about such things, uh, there's something about one uh, four hundred and fifty thousands of reports we have. Four hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. And okay. does it include the improvised explosive devices that were part it's, of the? It includes as devices as uh, Russian troops. So this is the general chatbot that collects different reports on different kinds. Okay, uh, I'm confused. Is the chatbot a component of DIA? Does that fall uh, under your the, the management chat structure? Uh, some way this is like separate solution. Uh, it's outside third-party chatbot based on the Telegram messenger, but in the same time, before reporting, you have to confirm your personality through the application as DIA can verify you without sharing your personal data. That's mean that uh, we understand that this is the real Ukrainian citizen reported there, so this is no fake information from the Russian bots or etc. So uh, we have the link on this chatbot in our application 
and uh, by tapping on this link, you will, uh, your, uh, your mobile phone will open the Telegram, but before reporting, you have to confirm your personality again through our application DM. Got it. Uh, is that a Ministry of Digital Transformation project all the way through? Yeah, this is the project of Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine. Right. Thank you. Thank you. She has a pytanie. Any more questions? I will have a question to whoever may answer it. You track how the use of digital services is changing uh, with time. But can we focus on this last year after 24th of February? What are the changes that we're seeing in terms of using digital services in psychology? What, what, what do we observe? Well, let, let me start. Within the last year, we've seen the growing number of uh, users. It was 15 and a half million or 16 million unique users. And very quickly, this number grew up to 18 million, and now it's 18.6 million unique users. So more than half of population of adult population of Ukraine as to the use, thanks to the services that we were able to use, like radio and television, it became, you know, such a trusted source of information for the people. People started spending more time in DIA. And what I'm trying to say is, uh, like, an example, having a news channel, for example, we added some entertainment content to to improve people's moods, to distract them in case of uh, air raid alerts. So we were broadcasting through the DIA TV, we were broadcasting Eurovision final. And m more than more than one million people saw it. Well, it was final, n not the selection. And we had announcements through DIA about the national selection and I think about 170,000 people voted during this national selection. So it increased the scale of the people who were ready to, so to say, to work through this digital application. And I will add something more about the elderly audience. It's really the elderly start using, start using DIA more and more. It's not personalized information, but there is a drawdown by age. We have 4.5 million users over 60 years old. Do you see any services that within which, within user which there were uh, changes during last year? Well, as soon as we launch any new service, the, the, the number of users grows, the demand is still growing. And what I would like also to mention is that 160,000 or 180,000 new private entrepreneurs were registered during the war. Is the continuation, uh, it means the continuation of Acti of business activities and growing number of new businesses in Ukraine. Well, and that there is such a thing when quality, quantity transforms to quality. Well, war is a tragic event and we, we are asked to comment how the society is changing, how it's being transformed. We cannot say that this uh, that the war united people because Ukrainians were united even before the war. The positive trend started after 2014, but the war expedites a number of uh, positive changes. People get adapted, people try something new, and th th there is uh, the intensification of uh, use of digital services. And this is what I mean by transformation of uh, quantity to quality. Yeah, we mentioned the growing number of users, but the use of DIA became more intense and it's organic part of it. So it's transitioned from something new to becoming the standard of our life. And now people, or soon people will be asking why that or this or that service is not available through DIA. And it's, uh, I would say, in compliance with the standards of the new world because showing Ukrainians in this ethnic, cultural, historic, 
uh, portrait, uh, it, uh, now it's different. It shows that we are the modern nation. We're moving forward. And uh, we are ahead of Russia with their this historic view of the world. And these some minor things in life, like use of digital services, it gives us more confidence that we are advanced nation. Well, it would be even better maybe that Mr. Anton finished because it was a positive note because I want to bring us back to this sad reality. Unfortunately, war influences a lot on the people of Ukraine and us with our partners in the government and other UN agencies, we study the influence of uh, war on people on this general aspect, this study will be presented in a couple of months. But what you ask how it influenced the use of digital services, I think that there is a growing number of people who need some social support, social aid through their uh, due to their vulnerabilities. We were saying that presented the results of this study that there is a growing uh, the number of uh, internally displaced persons and other vulnerable categories of population like uh, disabled or elderly or people who or families who lost their members due to the war and there is a big number of people who need some aid due to these changes caused by war and there was a demand for new services in India when people need some support from the government, either veterans or members of their families or the people who became disabled as a result of the war, not only veterans but also civilians who end up, who were affected by the war. The destruction of their property so i would want to i, I wanted just to mention uh, these vulnerable categories of population Mstislav Bannik, minister of digital transformation olena ursu undp anton krushetsky kiev international institute of sociology our next event will be at 1500 we will talk about psychological warfare and how to live in conditions of this psychological warfare. Thank you for your attention. Stand with Ukraine.